So. Okay. Looks like looks like it's working. Okay. So ten three. Um, it says rainfall for the Amazon was measured and recorded for thirty days. The results were displayed in a line plot that you've got right there. And. Um, it says, uh, what can you tell about the differences in the amounts of rainfall? That's the question they're asking. And boy, that's a really broad question because there's a lot, Mr. Delgado, that we can tell from that plot. And I, I have no idea what they want us to write down or what they would consider the right answer. But let me, let me point out some things. What's the most obvious thing that somebody could see in this line plot when we're talking about rainfall? that was that was uh, measured for 30 days in the Amazon what's the most obvious thing that one and one half is the most. yeah exactly the one and one half is the most I mean that's that's really pretty obvious and I don't I don't know if that's the you know what they're looking for you could say one and one half inches um, was the most common amount. Okay, what else could you tell? Yeah. Yeah. The least was what? Can you see it? Well, this is the least right here. What's the least amount? Can you tell me what that is? What's this one right here? Right. What's this one right here? Okay. So do you know what would go right here? Raise your hand if you can help her out. Pick somebody, hon. Right, I, but what's the answer? Oh, three-fourths. Yeah, three-fourths. Oh. Okay. So the least was three-quarter inches. All right. That's something else you could tell. What else could you tell? Mr. Willard, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Say again? One and three fourths. Well, that would be uh, right there. Say again. Mm, I'm not sure what you're saying. Did you, I heard you say the most? Right, and so we've already we've already addressed that. One and one half was the most common. What else could you tell by looking at this chart? One, Mr. Graham. Um, one and three fourths was the second least. One and three fourths was, I, I wouldn't phrase it the second least, but you could say one and three quarters was, was almost the largest amount, but not quite. But that kind of brings me to the next most obvious thing. What was the most amount in one day? We already, uh, Mr. Gisa already was talking about the least. What's the most? The most was what? One and one half. No, I'm talking about the amount of rainfall. Yeah, the most was two inches in a day. Okay. Um, and then, then you could even talk about the range from what was the smallest amount measured? Three quarters. Range was from three quarters to what? To two inches. <clears throat> so there's all kinds of things you can tell when they give you these charts to look at and ask you, you know, uh, what can you, 
you know, tell about the differences. All right. I'm not worried about the reasoning. You can cross that out. So let's go to the next page here. Um, it says Bruce measured the daily rainfall while working in uh, Costa Rica. And his line plot shows the days in September. All right. And then uh, the question is, what was the total rainfall for the month? So if you were just given this chart, how could you figure out the total rainfall for the month? The answer is there. How would you figure it out? Mr. Oldham. Yeah. So what, what, so let's just start with the smallest one, which is what? A quarter inch. How many of them are there? Three. Three? One, two, three, four, five. Is your book different than mine? No. Okay. So there's five one quarter inch days where a quarter inch fell. So um, you could do five times one quarter plus... How many, um, how many three-eighths inch of a day were there? Might be easier if you counted them in your book than looking up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, twelve. So plus twelve times three-eighths. Plus, and then you just kind of keep going. That's how you would figure it out. And of course, they've done that for us. The answer is 13 and 5 eighths. But you can kind of see they're doing the same thing here. It was 5 times 1 quarter. And then 12 times 3 eighths, and so forth. And you guys might have a problem that'll just give you this and ask you some questions about it. And you'll have to do some math. To convince me, um, Yeah, let's look at this. It says, Rosie says she can find the total uh, rainfall in the example above without multiplying. Mr. Cosgrove, do you agree or disagree? disagree. Say again? Disagree. disagree? Okay. So let's look at the first one. One quarter, and it was five days. And it's five times one quarter. So, Mr. Cosgrove, is there another way you could figure out what that would be? Really? Don't know? Okay. 100 points. Ms. Garen. Is there another way you could figure out what that amount would be as opposed to just five times one quarter? No. I'm trying to think of a different way to phrase it. That's not what I'm looking for. So, <clears throat> what's five times one quarter? Five times one quarter equals five over one times one quarter equals five over four equals one and one quarter right does that look right to you guys should to everybody because it is right um so i just figured out what five times one quarter is you know by multiplying is there another way i could figure out if there was five days and one quarter inch rainfall each Miss Jenny. You add one fourth. Yeah. Times. Yeah. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Okay. And since the denominator is the same, I could still do it. One, two, three, four, five. Five over four, which is an improper fraction. 
one and one quarter. All right. So, um, so the answer is yes. And then we explained it by demonstrating there. All right. Um, guided practice. Let's just look at these really quick, and then I'm going to let you guys work on these. In the line plot shown, how many grams of salt were left after the liquids in various containers evaporated? Um, I just want to make sure you guys recognize, what is this right here? What is, what is that amount? Mr. Fall. Yeah. So I'm just going to draw a line here, one and one half. All right. Four is obvious. Um, how about this one right here? What is, I'll uh, put it 50 points. Uh, Mr. Camisa, what is that amount? Six and one half. Yeah, six and one half. Okay. Then number one, it says, how could you find the difference between the greatest amount and the least amount of salt? Uh, Miss Maldonado, what does difference mean when we're talking about math? Subtraction. subtraction. Okay, so you guys are subtracting. All right, number two, um, scratch out number two. I'm not interested in grading uh, 29 different word problems. Number three, it says write and solve an equation that represents the total number of grams of salt left. Well, I just gave you an example of of multiplying and adding so what kind of equation you write is up to you you might multiply you might add but you can do that with this graph right there number four how many grams of salt would be left if two of each container were used uh, I think I'm not sure I think they're saying How many grams of salt would be left if two of each container were used? In various containers. That makes no sense to me. Yeah, okay, just scratch out four. I don't know what they're asking. All right. <clears throat> All right, number five, write an equation for the total number of string for an art project. Okay, so it looks like you're going to be adding or multiplying those lengths of string. Number six, what's the difference in length between the longest and the shortest length of string? Again, the uh, difference, we're talking about subtraction. All right. And problem solving. Let's take a look at this really quick. Um, write and solve an equation for the total amount of rainfall she recorded. You guys can do that. Number eight, suppose the same amount of rain fell the following week. But the same amount of rain fell each day. How many days are in a week? Seven. Okay, so it says this, suppose the same amount. So I'm just going to call that amount X. Okay, whatever that amount is, if you total that, okay, then you're going to divide it by what? Seven. Seven equals your answer. Okay. Uh, number nine. Oops. Who's what? That was uh, Mr. Moyers. He was helping me hold the book open while I was trying to take a picture. All right, number 10. Aletha recorded the amount she earned from t shirt sales. Okay. Um, oh, number nine. Yeah, you guys could do that. Um, area of a square deck. So it's square. So each side is going to have the same length. And remember, area equals what? Length times width. Um, write a problem that can be answered by using the frequency table. So um, I do want you guys to do number 10 here. And what I'll do tomorrow is that I'll pull a stick and then you tell me what your problem was. 
and if it makes sense, you know, and, and again, you're using that table, and there's, you know, probably 50 different problems we can come up with for number 10, uh, we'll make it worth 300 points. But it's got to be a good problem. I mean, a good problem. That's kind of a lame way to put it. It's got to be a, a thoughtful problem. Interesting. Don't, don't, you know, say like, yeah, yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. I'm not sure I can phrase it. What's that? Like Jeffrey and 82 bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Although they're talking about t-shirts, not bananas. Anyways, you guys, you guys get my gist. All right, number 11. Uh, looks like multiple choice. You can do that. And that's it. Bye. And uh, this is this is something else you don't have to worry about. Okay, so I'm going to end this recording. Stop.